Welcome to Countarts. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the total labor variance. We continue with our series on standard costing. We have looked at other lessons on standard costing, such as the material price variance, the material quantity variance, the labor rate variance, as well as the labor efficiency variance and the total material variance as well. We will see what the total labor variance is and how it relates to the other variances such as the labor rate variance and the labor efficiency variance. So if you'd like to check those other ones out, you'll find them in the links in the description below as well. So we say that a standard cost is a predetermined target cost that provides a benchmark against which to measure actual performance. So remember, after we get the actual figures for the period, we compare it to what we thought we would have spent or what we thought should have happened. And we're able to see what the variance is and make decisions based on that. The difference between actual costs and standard costs is called the variance. The variance could either be favorable or unfavorable. And we're going to see this as we go through the examples on the total labor variance. The total labor variance is the difference between the actual time worked at the actual rate and the standard time allowed at the standard rate. This is also the sum of labor rate variance and labor efficiency variance. Now, if this doesn't make much sense, it will shortly as we'll be going through the formula for the total labor variance as well as some examples in calculating the total labor variance. So let's look at the formula for the total labor variance. Well, here it is. It's the standard time allowed multiplied by the standard rate. And you take that sum and you deduct the actual time worked multiplied by the actual rate. It's as easy as that. Standard time allowed multiplied by the standard rate minus the actual time worked times the actual rate. So you can see here how it works. It's standard time allowed times the standard rate. So the standards go together and you deduct the actuals, which is the actual time worked multiplied by the actual rate. Another way to calculate the total labor variance is by taking the labor rate variance minus the labor efficiency variance. That's why I was saying we'll see how it relates to these ones here. So you take the labor rate variance if you have calculated it and you deduct the labor efficiency variance and you will be able to get your total labor variance. So what you always need to remember is that if the actual time worked at actual rate is less than the standard time allowed at standard rate, the variance is favorable. OK, so that should make sense because what we want is for the actual time work to be less than the standard time allowed. And we also want the actual rate that we are paying for the time work to be less than the standard rate. All right. So obviously, if you do the calculation, you should be able to see that the answer should be favorable if the actual time work at actual rate is less than the standard time allowed at standard rate. That being said, if the actual time worked at actual rate is more than the standard time allowed at standard rate, the variance is unfavorable, as I've just explained as well. So you must bear that in mind. And that's what the formula will show you. That's why we've started with the standard time allowed times the standard rate so that if you punch it into your calculator and the answer is positive, then you know that it's favorable. And if you punch it into your calculator and the answer is negative, then you'd know that it's unfavorable. Remember, that's if you put your formula exactly as we have done it here. All right. Some will actually start with the actuals, the actual time worked times the actual rate minus the standard time allowed times the standard rate. And that means that your answer, if it's negative, it would be favorable in that instance. And if it's positive, it would be unfavorable. But in our case, we've simplified it this way so that when you see a negative sign, you know that it's automatically unfavorable. All right, so let's go through some examples and simplifying everything we've just explained. Here's the first example that we have. We're told that the labor details in the production department of Max PLC are the standard labor cost, which is 2.4 hours at 3 rand per hour, meaning that the amount of time that is hoped to be spent on producing each unit is 2.4 hours and we're hoping to spend 3 rand per hour and the actual hours worked and the rate is 450 hours at 2 rand 80 per hour and the number of units that were actually produced is 200. We are asked to calculate the total labor variance. Okay, so how do we calculate the total labor variance? Well, let's bring up our formula once more. It's the standard time allowed multiplied by the standard rate and we deduct the actual time worked multiplied by the actual rate. 
All right, so the first one we need to find is the standard time allowed. What is the standard time allowed? Well, we need to calculate the standard time allowed. And how do we do that? Well, we will take the standard time per unit multiplied by the actual units that we produced. So what is the standard time per unit? Well, we're actually given, we're told here that the standard labor cost is 2.4 hours at 3 rand per hour. So that means we planned to use 2.4 hours for each unit. That is the standard time per unit, 2.4 hours. And then we multiply that by the actual units. What are the actual units? Well, the number of units produced is 200. So we take the 2.4 hours multiplied by 200 to see the total amount of hours we expected it to take us to produce the 200 units. That is the standard time allowed. And we'll multiply that answer by the standard rate. What is the standard rate? Well, we're also given that amount. It's 3 Rand over here. So let's look at that here. It's 2.4 hours times 200 units, 480 hours. That means if we produce 200 units based on our standards, we expected it to take 480 hours to produce all those units. So we'll take the standard time allowed multiplied by the standard rate of 3 Rand, and then we will deduct the actual time worked. Well, how many hours did we actually work? Well, we're given here actual hours worked and rate is 450 hours. And we'll multiply that by the actual rate of 2 Rand 80 cents. So here's how the entire formula would look. Standard time allowed 480 hours and we we'll multiply that by the standard rate, which is 3 Rand, and then we deduct the actual time worked, 450 hours, and we we'll multiply that by the actual rate of 2 Rand, 80 cents, and it gives us 180 Rand, and it's favorable, all right? I hope you would have actually seen that it was favorable because you can see, first of all, our standard time allowed was 480, meaning we expected to spend 480 hours, but you can see the actual here is 450, all right? But that alone does not tell you whether it's favorable or unfavorable. You also have to look at the prices, all right? We expected to spend 3 Rand for each hour, but we actually spend 2 Rand 80 for each hour. So obviously, if you do the calculation, you will find that you get 180 Rand, and it's favorable because the answer will come out as a positive, but not just that. You can see that the standard is higher than the actuals, meaning we actually spend less money than we thought we would have spent, all right? That's why it's favorable, and we can make decisions based on that. So if you're asked, what are the possible reasons as to why it is favorable? Well, the first one is uh, we might have made an error when we were estimating our number of hours and our rate or since the labor cost is lower than we estimated it's 2 rand 80 and we thought we would have spent 3 rand that means that uh, the labor rate in the market fell down or we're able to secure our labor at a cheaper price than we thought we would because of maybe negotiations or there's a high supply of labor and that is why the price per hour could have fallen down. Those are some of the possible reasons. Another one is we could have been very efficient here because we spend 450 hours instead of 480 hours, which we thought we would have spent. So that means we have either upgraded our machinery or we just manage our production very well. We were very efficient and spend less time than we thought we would have spent. So it's a combination of both here because you can see we spend less time as well as the price. We spend a lower price than we thought we would. So those are some possible explanation as to why the variance is favorable. And obviously, if it were unfavorable, then obviously the opposite would be true of the explanation that I've just given. All right, so let's look at the second example. And what I'd like you to do here is to pause the video and attempt to do the question on your own. This will help you gauge whether you really understand what you've been going through and try and give an explanation as to why it is whether favorable or unfavorable. And then you can continue the video and see how you would have done. So you can go ahead and pause it and try and calculate the total labor variance on your own. Okay, I hope you have attempted it. Let's read together. The standard time allowed to produce one unit of product ego is five direct labor hours at a standard rate of 12 rand per hour. It took the company 3,330 hours at 14 rand 50 per hour to produce 650 units of product ego. Calculate the total labor variance. Again, we know the formula. It's the standard time allowed multiplied by the standard rate and we deduct the actual time worked multiplied by the actual rate. 
All right, first question, what is the standard time allowed? Well, if you can see here, the formula once again, it's the standard time per unit multiplied by the actual units. So let's see, what is the standard time per unit? Well, we're told that the standard time allowed to produce one unit of product ego is five direct labor hours. So obviously, the standard time per unit is five hours. And how many units did we actually produce? Well, it's simple. We're given. We're told that it took the company 3,330 hours at 1,450 per hour to produce 650 units. So the actual unit is 650. So we take five hours multiplied by 650 units and it gives us 3,250 hours. That means that based on the units that we actually produced, we should have spent 3,250 hours hours all right so we have our standard time allowed what is our standard rate well we, we are given here we're told that the standard rate is 12 rand per hour so we'll take the 3250 hours multiplied by the standard rate of 12 rand and then we deduct the actual time worked well how many hours did we work for well you can see that it took the company 3330 hours so we'll take the 3330 and we multiply that by the actual rate of 14 rand 50. All right, and we will have our answer. Is it favorable or unfavorable? Well, let's see here. 3,250 standard time allowed multiplied by 12, which is the standard rate, and minus the actual time worked of 3,330 hours multiplied by the actual rate of 1,450. And it gives us an unfavorable amount of 9,285 rand. If you punch it into your calculator, you would actually see that it would give you a negative answer. That is how you'd know it's unfavorable. But be able to make sense of why it's unfavorable actually. Because you may be asked again, what are the possible reasons as to why it could have been unfavorable? Well, you can look at the amount of hours that we thought we would spend versus the amount of hours that we actually spent. You can see we thought we would spend 3,250 hours, but we actually spent more hours than that, 3,330 all right, and what is the possible reason for that? Well, it could be that our machinery is uh, growing old and it's not as efficient as it used to be. That is why it's taking us more time or there was a lot of idle time with our labor. Uh, we didn't manage our production well. That is why we spend more hours than we thought that we would or could have made a mistake with our estimates. All right, so that's always a possible answer. We could have made a mistake with our estimates. And you can also see that we thought that we would spend 12 rand per hour, but we actually spend 14 rand 50 per hour. What are the possible reasons? Well, the labor rate could have gone up from the time we estimated to the time that we actually produced, the labor rate could have gone up because of uh, possible shortages in the market. That is why there was a high demand for labor and the rate could have risen or the trade unions were able to negotiate a higher price. So there are a lot of reasons that you can give if you're not given any indications in the particular question. But just be able to understand it enough to say why it would be unfavorable or when it would be unfavorable or favorable and what are the possible reasons. I hope this one has made sense. Let's look at one more example. Example number three. What I'd like you to do again is to pause the video, try the question on your own and try and explain the possible reason as to why it could have been favorable or unfavorable and then you can continue and see how you have done, right? I hope you have attempted it on your own. I hope you pause the video. Let's read. BRD LLC has a standard time of 0 0.6 hours to produce one tray at a standard rate of 5 rand per hour. It took the company 22,000 hours of direct labor at a total cost of 99,000 rand to make 27,500 trays. Calculate the total labor variance. Again, the formula is here. Standard time allowed multiplied by the standard rate minus the actual time worked multiplied by the actual rate. What is the standard time allowed? Well, we're going to take the standard time per unit and multiply it by the actual units. So what is the standard time per unit? Well, that's easy. We are given. We are told that the company has a standard time of 0 0.6 hours to produce one tray, meaning one unit. So the standard time per unit is 0 0.6. And then we multiply that by the actual units. How many units did we actually produce? Well, we are told we made 27,500 trays all right so that's the actual unit so we're going to take the 0 0.6 hours multiplied by the 27,500 trays and it's going to give us the standard time allowed to produce the units that we actually did and it is 16,500 hours that means 
we expected it to take us 16,500 hours to produce the units of 27,500, all right? Now that we have our standard time allowed, what is our standard rate? Well, our standard rate we are given, the standard rate is five rand per hour. So we're going to take the 16,500 hours multiplied by the five rand per hour, and then we deduct the actual time worked. What is the actual time worked? Well, we can see here it's 22,000 hours. However, we are not given the actual rate per hour. You can see here, we're not given, we're just given the total cost or the total amount that we spent for all the hours that we took, all right? That means we already given the answer. We don't have to multiply the actual time worked by the actual rate. I hope that's making sense. The reason we are multiplying the actual time worked by the actual rate is for us to get the total cost that we spent to make the units that we actually produced, all right? But we are already given the total cost of 99,000 Rand. So I hope you attempted the question. I hope you're able to pick that up on your own, all right? So here's how it would look. 16,500 hours which is the standard time allowed multiplied by the standard rate of five rand and we deduct the actual total labor cost which is the 99,000 rand if you wanted to do it the traditional way based on the formula you'd have to get the actual time worked and to get the actual time worked obviously you are given the actual time worked it's the 22,000 hours and the actual rate you would have to take the 99,000 rand divided by the 22,000 hours and that will give you the actual rate. But you don't have to do all that. You just have to know that this is your total labor cost or the actual total labor cost. And that is what this uh, bracket over here on the right is trying to calculate. So you're already given. That's why we didn't have to do the calculation for that one. All right. I hope it has made sense. The reason we did these three examples, because these are the variation to which you can be asked to calculate the total labor variance. And in this case, you can see that it's 16,500 Rand and it's a negative or it's unfavorable. And why would it be unfavorable? Well, you can clearly see that we expected to spend 16,500 hours, all right? But we ended up spending 22,000 hours. So we spend way more hours than we actually thought we would. Again, the reasons would be the same here. You could say that our machine is obsolete or it's too old and it's not as efficient as we thought it would be. Or there was a lot of idle time or we didn't manage our production team or production well enough. And on the rate here or the price, you can compare this 5 Rand. And for you to compare to the actual one, you will take the 99,000 Rand divided by the 22,000 hours and that will give you the actual rate that was incurred and if you do that calculation 99,000 rand divided by 22,000 hours it will give you 4.5 rand meaning we actually spend less money than we thought we would have spent all right so you can see here the total labor variance is actually unfavorable not because of the price or the rate but because of the hours all right we spend way more hours than we thought that we would have spent even though we saved on the amount we thought we would have spent we spent 450 although we thought that we would have spent five rand so you can see how the total labor variance works and how you can justify whatever answer you get and also how to do the calculation when you're asked to do so in a variety of ways I hope it has made sense. I hope you've gained value from this lesson. And if you have, consider subscribing to our channel, like this video, and share it to those you think it might help. Till next time, cheers.